Okay, welcome everyone. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Graham Reynolds and I am a scuba, master scuba diver instructor and an underwater photographer. I do a little bit of travel photography, some landscape and street photography as well. But my real passion and what I'm really focusing on is underwater photography uh, with an emphasis on tuition. So this video today is going to be a bit of a what's in my bag. This is pretty much my whole underwater setup. So whether I'm shooting locally or abroad on holiday or traveling, this is pretty much all the gear that I take with me when I'm shooting underwater. So if you enjoy, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, if you do hit the subscribe button, the, the like button, share it amongst uh, your friends or anyone else who you might think uh, would get some value out of it. And keep an eye on my channel and my social media feeds because there'll be plenty more of this sort of stuff to come. Anyway, without much more of a further ado, uh, this is the bag that I use. This is the Low Pro All Weather uh, Fast Pack 250. It's perfect for me, uh, whether I'm uh, you know, shooting for underwater or whether I'm traveling and not doing any diving, this bag is the only bag that I use. With one exception, sorry, uh, I have a little small uh, carry bag if I'm going out for the day and I'm just taking my camera and one lens, I'll, I'll take that with me as well. But uh, this is the main bag for kind of all my gear and it houses all of my underwater equipment as well. So it's really great because I, I can take this with me on a plane as my carry on and I don't have to check any of my photography gear, which I don't really like doing. I don't really like checking any of my uh, scuba gear, but you have to pretty much. Uh, so if, you, if you're going to take underwater gear. I've got a different video about scuba gear, which you can check out at some point. So this is, like I say, the low pro. Fast pack, uh, 250 all weather, and it's got pretty much everything in it. So, front pocket here, two clips. Uh, in this front section, I carry spare batteries. I've got many more batteries, they're all on charge at the moment. The charger goes in here as well. The main compartment, down the bottom here, houses some memory cards in the lid. Uh, if you if you wanted it to, I don't tend to use that. I have this, which is a memory card pouch that lives in my bag normally. Memory cards aren't in there at the moment. I need to stock up, but that would go in with my batteries normally. First thing I want to mention is this. This is the Essential Digital Underwater Photography Masterclass. This book is like my photography bible. I absolutely love this book. It's packed full of information. It's not a particularly thick book. It's definitely not difficult to read. There's heaps of information in here, right from the very basics of underwater photography through to you know post-production editing and organizing your photos, sharing them, all that kind of stuff. So this is an excellent resource and I highly, highly recommend it. If you're unable to find it in your local area, hit me up and I will find you a copy because everyone should have this, it's great. Make myself some more room. This is my main housing. Uh, this will surprise quite a few people, I would think. Uh, the main guys for um, underwater housings are Icolite, uh, Nauticam, uh, anything kind of aluminium construction. I don't have one of those, mainly because up until now I haven't been able to afford one of those. So I have this uh, plastic rated to 40 meters, 130 feet, uh, waterproof case made by Micon, which is spelled M E I K O N, Micon. Um, Online, they're about 250, 300 Australian dollars. Dirt Cheap does a fantastic job. I've taken this 
past 40 meters on the President Coolidge in Vanuatu, where I was photographing the lady and the divers that I was with. And, uh, and it stood up really well. It does everything I want it to do. If I want to take this in the water just as it is, just to do some wave photography, I can do that. Uh, I normally have this on a rig, which I will show you, we'll get to that. Uh, but for the money, I don't think you can go wrong. You do have to look after them. You do have to check them out and make sure that you, you know, hasn't uh, sustained any kind of damage, but you always need to do that. Uh, but these, this has done a fantastic job and I'm really pleased with it. It has a dual clasp on the side here, and then it has clasp on the top and a clasp on the bottom. And they're super strong. Uh, they do a great job of sealing the, the door to the housing. They're not gonna come off easily by any means. Uh, so yeah, I'm really pleased with this, especially for the money. And this clasp here, you can't undo that clasp without using this red button. So you first have to slide that red button up in connection with opening that clasp, and then it comes loose. So into the housing. It has a dual O-ring system, so an O-ring in the housing itself there, and an O-ring on the door there, which they squeeze together and give you an excellent, excellent seal and it does a great job. So yeah, that's the Micon uh, underwater housing. And I love it, I think it's great. One thing I will point out with it, it does have a leak detection system as well. So you should see just down in this corner here, there's a little bulb. And if water was to make contact with the strip on the bottom there, it would emit a, an alarm. And that bulb flashes to let you know that there's an issue. So, um, cool little safety system there as well. Hold that there for now. I shoot on the Olympus OMD EM5 Mark II. Uh, generally speaking, I shoot with a standard 12 to 50 millimeter lens. And that's it. I can't change lens ports on this housing. One of the fallbacks of it being, you know, budget a budget case. I can get a 60mm macro lens in there which is pretty cool and I do do that um, every now and then but um, yeah this camera is great it's you know super compact really portable I'll do a different video on kind of this camera in a bit more detail but I really love the Olympus lineup I love the aesthetics of this camera um, I love the way it feels in my hand it's been great for my travel photography it's excellent for street photography, it's great for landscape, and it does a superb job underwater. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, I do always have a GoPro with me. Uh, I'll take this you know, whenever I go on holiday or uh, if I travel anywhere, and I mount this to the top of my housing uh, and uh, yeah, it just continuously records video for me when I'm diving, and that way I know I've already got, I've always got some video, some B-roll, or something that I can refer back to um, if I if I need to, because I don't tend to shoot video with the Olympus. I will if there's something that I feel will particularly uh, benefit from video, but otherwise I just leave, leave the GoPro to do that for me. In this pouch here, I have a dome. The dome allows me to get closer to subjects uh, so that I can eliminate, you know, water in between me and the subject. Um, it's not in the best of shape. It may need to be replaced pretty soon. It's had a bit of a rough life. It's got knocked about on a couple of boats and things like that and sustained a couple of Scratches, the great thing about shooting underwater is they will disappear when you're actually underwater. So uh, yeah, it's, it's still standing up pretty well. It's a wet dome, so that means that when I jump in uh, straight away, um, I won't normally have this on. I will jump in, dive down to the depth that I'm gonna be diving at or somewhere similar, and then I will attach this. And what that means is that it's full of water. Uh, and that allows the, 
the dome and the housing to work correctly. I have two fiber optic cables for the strobes and I'll come to the strobes next. So two fiber optic cables made by CMC. They're quite expensive fiber optic cables, so you do need to look after them. They're about $150 each. So the strobes I, I shoot with are the C and C YSD2 strobes. Um, they have a guide number of 32, and I'll do a whole video on uh, strobes and how they work and their specs and things like that. But basically, they're bright. They're really bright. Uh, they put out a lot of light. They recharge in about the recharge cycle is about a second and a half, so uh, really quick to recycle, which is great because I can just continue shooting and I don't really notice the delay. Uh, I tend to keep the 100 degree diffuser with the strobe, and the majority of the time I'll actually shoot with the dis with the uh, diffuser on. So they tend to stay yeah, on the strobe itself. I have the red filter here, which allows me to put a spotlight on and emit just a red light. So if I have some particularly skitty creature or critter that I'm trying to shoot, I, um, I can just line my, my lights up and I don't need to worry about disturbing it too much. I have a number of different shooting modes. Full manual control, slave TTL, uh, we'll cover all of that in future videos. But basically, um, I have full control over the strobe and the amount of light that it outputs. You can use the top dial here on this side for uh, exposure control or the bottom dial for aperture values. So it's really easy to understand and I don't need to figure out too much when I'm actually under the water trying to just get the shot. The other thing that I really like about these strobes is that depending on what mode you're in, this light will actually illuminate uh, amber, green or blue, so it, you can tell easily what mode you're in, and it illuminates the whole back section of the strobe, so especially on a night dive it's really handy because you can see what settings you've got dialed in, which is really cool. Uh, of course I have the Olympus uh, flash. I need that on the camera when I dive in the housing to fire so that that actually triggers my strobe. And that's what the fiber optic cables are for. They take the light that the uh, on camera flash has illuminated and enables the strobes to fire. Now, the neon pouch, this one houses the um, Olympus. 60mm um, f2.8 macro lens. I'm going to be using this a lot more, especially later on in the year. I'm going to Hawaii, uh, so I'm going to plan on doing some macro photography uh, leading up to that trip, but uh, definitely while there as well. And that's about it for the main compartment, for the main kind of gear. That's really all the gear that I, that I have. I have a little silica packet there, which I put in just to keep everything dry. But um, yeah, that's a really, you know, lightweight workflow. And that's my whole ethos. I don't want to be weighed down with too much gear. So I try and keep it as minimal as possible. I'm looking for a way of actually diving with my 10s Max uh, and, and a lighting setup for that. Because I think that would be a really cool way of working as well. So stay tuned for that because I do have some ideas. Um, bag on the side here has a nice long pocket I can put um, iPad uh, I do all my work on an iPad Pro so that goes in there really easily I can also put my Kindle in there if I want to travel with my Kindle um, the top pocket here I leave empty um, and I can put in you know a book or Kindle or headphones wallet, travel wallet, passport, keys, snacks, things like that go in this pocket here. It's deceptively roomy, this this bag. All the pot, you know, that pocket seems really small, but actually it'll take a lot of stuff. Just 
Um, in this main pocket up here, you know, again, really roomy, plenty of space for stuff. So where do I start? This bungee cord allows me to connect, uh, to fasten my camera rig to my DCD so that I can let it hang by my side or in front of me. Um, and when I want to use it, I can just undo that clip and the bungee cord stretches out and it gives me loads of room to work with the camera, but it stays attached to me. So I'm not worried about losing my gear. It has a quick release clip. So if I did need to ditch my gear, if I got in trouble, and I needed to get rid of my all of my stuff, I could do that easily um, if I needed to. Hopefully, that will never happen. I'll come to all those bits and pieces in just a second. I have a carrier bag here in which I have spares, basically. So spare O-rings for my rig, spare O-ring for my housing and the diffuser for the, for the housing. I very rarely use that, but it's there if I need it multiple packets of leak sorb, otherwise known as silica gel packets. I'll always dive with at least one of those in the housing, just stops the, the housing and the camera fogging up. Clean pack, you know, lens wipes, lens cloth, um, cotton buds, cleaning solution, brush, that kind of thing, more silica packets. Puffer. This really cool peak design strap. Um, this is just a wrist strap, so if I'm just using the camera on its own, I have something that I can attach to me so I don't have to hold it all the time. Uh, this is the battery charger, uh, just an energizer battery charger for the batteries that go uh, in my strobe. Z, <laughs> my strobe. Um, each strobe takes four AA batteries. So I have these Nloop Pro uh, AA batteries. They're by Panasonic, they're rechargeable. Uh, they seem to work very well. I generally will get at least dive and a half, two dives out of a charge of those batteries, potentially even more sometimes. I have been known to get um, three dives and a night dive out of a single charge on these batteries. But as they degrade, you know, their full charge doesn't quite keep up. This is a new set. So um, I'm looking to get three, three to four dives out of these for about six months. I have another sandwich bag here, which has an old lens cloth and some silicon gel. And I'll use that just to clean the seal of the housing before uh, I actually go on a dive. Then we have the rig. Now I break down my rig when everything's in storage. So if I'm not using things or I'm not planning on going for a dive anytime soon, uh, I will actually break, break my rig down, take it all apart. And that way I can maintain, you know, all the ball joints, the O-rings, I can grab them easily and take them off of the housing. Uh, sorry, of the rig, I can check them, I can inspect them, make sure they're not degrading, make sure they haven't cracked or drying out. Because if one of those breaks during the middle of a dive, I'm pretty stuffed. You know, I can't position my strobes where I want them, I don't have any control over them. So I will break my rig down so that I can maintain everything. I need to give the, these, uh, these sort of things a bit of a clean. These are what actually control um, or fasten the, um, the arms together. So I have a number of these. Generally speaking, I'll have one of these connected to one like this, which has this flat section, which connects to the strobe. So that gives me loads of positions that I can pop the strobe in. This is a screw that runs through from the bottom edge runs through the ball clamp to a wing nut which is female, there's a female thread. If you don't break your stuff down, what happens is salt water will just sit on those threads, and I've learned this from experience. Salt water will just sit on the threads and corrode them, and eventually it will act like a glue and you won't be able to undo this. 
And if you can't move this, if it's just the screw moving and not the handle, then it won't tighten this joint. So you won't be able to fix your strobes in position and you won't be able to undo it to make so you can break down your gear easily. So it shows the importance of maintenance, preventative maintenance. So I have four of those. And I have two large wing nut screws here and they attach the strobe to the strobe arm. Like that. There's my other arm. And then one of the arms has um, this adapter on it. And what I'll do is I'll have my dome port on here when I actually jump in for my dive. And then when I get to depth, I'll unscrew it from there and I'll put it onto the camera rig. <clears throat> Little GoPro adapter. That GoPro adapter sits on the very top of my camera enclosure. And that's where my GoPro sits to record my dive. And then just the trays for the for the rig. That's the top tray that I've just popped down there, and this is the bottom tray, and that's where that bungee cord attaches to here. So I have that attached to me at all times. And last but not least, of course, just the screws. Two quarter inch screws to hold the housing onto the rig. And a sandwich bag full of um, nuts and bolts and washers and things for when I want to put my rig together. That's it. That's all my underwater photography gear. All goes into this bag, um, which on the strap, I'll just point it out because I think it's really cool, has this peak design capture. Um, this is excellent. This has a little tripod mount in it, which goes on the bottom of your camera. If you don't have one of these, get one. They're really awesome, um, especially if you do a lot of travel photography or street photography or something like that, and you have a bag that you take with you, and you uh, want to be able to not have to carry your camera all day. Um, these are excellent. So that can go onto a tripod if necessary, but when you're not wanting to use your camera, it just clips into there. And then you just have it on your shoulder strap and you don't have to carry it around with you. It's really awesome. Um, it will go on a belt buckle, it will go on a, a bag strap. Um, I think it's a really cool accessory. Um, it's about 50 Australian dollars. I think it's worth every penny. They're really great. So that's the uh, Peak Design Capture. I love that. And yeah, all my gear, my underwater shooting. Um, it's a pretty lightweight workflow. I'm always looking to improve on it uh, in terms of, you know, I need to be aware of functionality and the results that I can get out of my setup. But I also, you know, don't want to be weighed down by too much gear because there's enough scuba gear as it is. I don't want, you know, all this photography gear to be getting in the way of things as well. So um, I'm looking at ways of shooting on my iPhone, which is why is recording this video at the moment. But that could be a challenge. You know, I don't know how much that's gonna perform underwater, but yeah, stay tuned for, for that kind of stuff because that's quite exciting. Uh, if you've got any questions or any thoughts or comments, you know, please leave them below. I'll do my best to get back to everyone. Um, I'm sure I'm able to at the moment, uh, but yeah, this is, this is what I shoot with. I hope you've got some value out of this. I hope you found it interesting and uh, we'll be doing uh, plenty more videos again soon. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you again.